I'd like to welcome everybody in. My name is Sherry. We are Railbirds Productions. You are witnessing the finals of the Fallen Timbers Monthly Nine Ball Tournament. This is a race to seven true double elimination. Kevin is the final winner side, so he has to be beat twice. Um, nine ball, race to seven, alternating break. Three foul rule is in effect. Uh, rack your own, nine ball does not count in the bottom two holes. Per usual, a uh, pretty controlled break by Kevin. Lou's going to join me again. Say hello to the world, Lou. I am back. So how was that last match? It was Brad could have won. No. Made a few unforced errors. Nah. I was over there hitting balls, so I didn't get to see much of it, but he said uh, he missed a six ball to go up 5 2 or something like that. Instead, it was 4 3, and then it just went downhill from there. Yeah, that's what happened when you make mistakes. No. Uh, Kevin's got a nice little shot here on the four just to slide off for the five in the same corner. A little bit much. Yeah, a little strong, but, you know, okay. he's, he's sure he's going to go to the right side of the six, though, you know. If he got straight in, he was in even, you know, he's in even bigger trouble than he is with there. So I think he's going to go to the forward to, yeah, right there and come out for the seven. You playing much pool out in Mount Pleasant? Is there any pool there? Yes, there is. There are several tables at my university. Mm, right on. Is that uh, Central Michigan um, Betts? Is Betts the one who runs it there? What's that? Uh, Betsy. Did, th did you guys just get a couple diamond tables? Uh... Or was that another Michigan University that just got one of the one of the ladies that played in one of the tournaments I played in recently uh -huh. was at one of the colleges and they just got a couple of diamond tables put in. Mm. We have bronze wicks. No, that's not bad. Nine to say, yeah. Kevin. Yeah, for the first game. Take your time, Kevin. And a deposited. Ooh, Rogers brought me some pulled pork, yay, and coleslaw. Don't need any of that bread, it's not good for you. Well, it's nice to uh, establish your nice nice lead in the first match, putting that putting some doubt in your opponent's mind. Yeah, well, there was a study done years ago where somebody you know, the percentages of, um, you know, who wins by, um, who wins the first game, who ends up winning the match, and they said it was like 70% of the time the guy who wins the first game ends up winning the match. And it doesn't, you know, mean it maybe one guy's got to, th I have a thing where if I'm down, I play better. Mm -hmm. So you probably don't want to win the first, you know, game or two against me. <laughs> But for the most part, they, uh, it's like yeah, like a 70% thing is what they say. Well, Trent attempted a safety. Looks like he didn't get there, so yeah. Kevin's up by the table. Yeah, he's got a nice uh, a shot at a safety here where he can... Uh, bank the one ball up table and put the cue ball up in behind the six or he can attempt to hit it even easier and hit it a little thinner and put the cue ball behind the five ball. Use the five as a blocker. 
or you hit it harder and go further up table with the one and use the six as a blocker. And he went right between the two. That's a uh, that's a shot you got to put into your practice book. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And Trent's going to play safe. He wants to get up in behind this five. Good pace on the cue ball. Nice control. Uh, Kevin's looking at most likely a one rail kick. Yeah, and he'd like to hit the bottom side, you know, the low side of the uh, one ball here and have the one ball go back up in between the set or just, just hit it in the it, hole yeah. and come up with a shot on the deuce. If you're Kevin, that's what you do today, apparently. <laughs> Can you see enough to two to make it? Um, yes, absolutely. But the problem is, is the cue ball is going to, he has to keep it away from the 9-7 and out of the corner at the same time. And uh, he's going to catch a roll here. And That's unfortunate. Uh, Miscued by Kevin. Uh, looks like he got saved. Oh, Trent is looking at some possible escape. Okay, I need the money. From the trying to figure out the money here and get it broke up for the guys. <coughs> well, I, I can <laughs> help you spend some money. Oh, no. We, you know, you see, you got to go to the casino when we first, you know, get all the money, and then we can go double down. Get Bet it. on the horse race. There was a horse race or something today. Oh. <laughs> the Kentucky Derby was today. Uh, I was overseas in Hong Kong a, a couple of years ago, and I tried horse uh, bidding, and I, I don't understand how the process works. I just went for fun. <laughs> Kevin, it's time to ask. Escape. Must kick the two in. He was trying to kick it in past the five. Good hit and hasn't left anything easy. No, it's definitely not an easy shot he's left here. That pocket was pretty big, kicking it towards the five there. You can make the five, make the uh, de deuce off of the five. Like Trent was trying to bank that a couple rails out, maybe hopefully get it down there by the nine seven. Mm, hit the two, hit the three on the way in instead. He's left him pretty straight up shot here. That's good. Better than Miss Kuhn. <laughs> yeah, he's done that a few times today. I think there's uh, maybe time to replace his tip. He likes a harder tip than I do. Now, do you guys do it yourselves, or do you guys send it out? Oh, no, he does all of it. He built the cues we play with. I, I, I Yeah, I you guys have uh, the same cue, but in the uh, Reverse. Uh, contrasting. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yin and yang. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he, you know, he made them. We designed them in the garage with the rings and everything. and uh, So, yeah, nobody else touches my cue. I've shot with your cue before. Yeah, it plays nice. <laughs> Well, he's got a shot in the side pocket here, and if you miss it, you're probably going to leave it pretty tough. Or he can just roll it up table and play the cue ball into the back of the line, which is probably what Kevin's going to do. Okay. Play, pl try to you play it safe. If you bump the nine, it comes out, and it helps you hide the cue ball. You can hit it a little bit harder if you plan on running into the nine. And he did exactly what you said. You know his game very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, after being married for almost 21 years, I better know his game. <laughs> yeah. That's a shot I have to remember. So uh, when I was commentating with Kevin earlier, and uh, I was just mentioning to Kevin, oh, here's a jump shot by Trent. Let's see how mm -hmm. he does. 
Well, he got over it Good and hit. just made the five Lucky. and the four is going to go in. Nope. Oh, okay. Oh, and that, that's, that's a nice little roll there too. The four not going in because he didn't have, didn't have much of a shot on the six. So you were talking uh, about Trent's. Uh, he, when he shoots, he sort of prematurely uh, gets up before he delivers his stroke. Some guys do a little rise up because uh -huh. they say it they can cue better and they can see the line better. So that little bit of raise up is um, he's he's checking. That's his like you know when the last time you look at the cue ball to make you know the object ball before you shoot you have your pause. Some people have this little raise up to get the a better look at the line that they're shooting on. I know um, probably about ten people that do that. Mm -hmm little rise up and then they shoot yeah I suppose no matter what you do as long as you do it consistently with every single shot yeah it's oh you look at um what's it, uh oh my brain the names just fall out of my brain anymore but uh, there's guys that shoot sidearm and they they play absolutely amazing um, Keith McCready plays extremely side-armed and one of the best money players ever. So it's, yeah, whatever works for you and do it consistently. Because that, that's what this is. It's all about muscle memory and repeated action. What well, good attempt by Kevin. Yeah. Unfortunately, didn't get on a seven. Yeah, um... I think he's gonna. You're gonna see him bank this ball cross side, and, and he's gonna aim to hit it long. He may even just flat out go for the two. What we, it's a two rail um, safety bank the seven long off of the side rail. In between, you want to be hitting probably you know a diamond and a half up from the end rail, and then the cue ball hits the end. Uh, the object ball hits the end rail, so it's a one two to the end rail and the okay. cue ball. Ideally, stays up at the end rail. So it's a Z bank um, safety. Looks like a shot I have to practice. <coughs> and and this we were just talking about the importance of uh, playing safety, especially in nine ball. Very crucial. Yeah, uh, you got to know where everything's going. You got to know uh, if you're playing safe and you're gonna. You know, let's say you're playing safe on the one or the two, and you're hooking somebody in the back of a ball, and now all of a sudden that ball goes, and now you have to shoot because it's a game of slop. Mm. You know, you, you have to be really careful. I'm not sure what Kevin's doing here, except for maybe thinning it and leaving him way up table. I don't think he hit it. Maybe he did. He did. I didn't see it. I wasn't looking at the up close screen. I was looking at the little one. Would he bank at this one? No. Oh, he tried. He, he he banked at it. And then he hasn't. You know, it's definitely not a hanger. And this table here has tighter pockets than all of the rest of them. Mm. This has the uh, pro cut pocket, so they're four and a quarter inch. And we're looking at these uh, seven foot diamond tables. No. Yeah. Very nice, beautiful we, tables. We love them. But this one, um, a local player actually ordered it, and he wanted it. He ordered it in rose, and it came in black. So that's why we have one that has uh, the pro cut pockets. Watch out, side pocket. Uh, nowhere close. Nice. Nowhere Very close. Nice. Very nice. Trent says, "Uncle." I will. I will make sure Kevin shoot. Yeah, uh, he's playing <laughs> good today. It's he's finally not, um, you know, m missing stuff that he isn't supposed to miss at his level. Yeah. You know. And this is race two seven. I, I believe. Yes, it is. It's a race to seven. I'm a little surprised by that. He has such a controlled break, and he went all out at it there. And he didn't make a ball. He makes a ball with his controlled break. 
but sometimes it can you can have a, you know things a little bit closer together if you you know because you're not hitting them as hard. Mm-hmm. Um, here you you know hitting them even too hard, you can end up with the same thing on the smaller table. They go to the rails and come back in. But uh, yeah, I was really surprised to see Kevin hit the balls that hard. He normally doesn't hit the break that hard. And he'll be taking this. He'll be cutting. He'll be cutting at this ball. And, uh, he's living a lot for somebody playing at uh, Kevin's caliber. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kevin's definitely cutting at this ball. Cue ball probably come up and hit the four. Either that or he's going to put English on it to miss it so that uh, he doesn't. He was, and he uh, overcut it and spun her right into the hole. He was trying, he put the English on it to try to make the cue ball hit the four. But when he misses the ball, it you know, yeah. changes its trajectory, and now it's in the pocket. And So everything is out in the open? Yeah. Yeah. Just take your time and make the ball and get in good position. Yeah, the, the biggest problem here is this two to the three because the side pockets are blocked and, you know, it, other and there's an, uh, other than actually executing to position on the three. And he's overran a little bit on mm-hmm. this three. Yeah. He's probably going to play the combination on the six and the side because the cue ball is going for a natural angle for shape. Well, if you now he's looking at a nine. Yeah, now he's looking at a three nine combo here. I expected him to hit it with a little, a little bit easier, with a little more control. This is off angle. You now tight pockets. Mm-hmm. You know the finals. <laughs> Anything could happen. And he drills and it. He does it. That was a nice shot. And here we have a uh, two to one. Two to one trench break. And Kevin and I earlier were talking about some players, they are pattern racking and also uh, intentionally breaking soft. Now the, uh, the the Whirlpool organization that does the uh, rules for basically that's your BCA rules is where they mostly where that comes from. They have uh, they, they put, uh, put it into the rules that uh, no pattern racking for nine ball. You're supposed to just throw the balls in now. And they've actually had that rule for eight ball for a few years where when you're racking eight ball, you're only supposed to touch the eight ball and the corner balls. So it's a, it's a true random rack. Mm. It doesn't matter if you've got four or five balls in a row or right next to each other that are solids or stripes. That yes. None of that matters. Yes. I actually read the, uh, the, the, the official ruling on that, and you're correct. A nice push out by Kevin. Yeah. Now the only thing that matters is uh, the eight ball in the middle and a solid and a stripe on the, bot- on the back corners. Everything else being random. Yeah, everything else has to be random. Now, if you're like me, where you only take a couple balls out and you set them in and you take a couple, b- <laughs> it uh, I rack them the same way every time, but I generally don't break them the same way twice. <laughs> I try to, but it doesn't happen. But anyhow, um, Trent's uh, just missed. I think he just missed the one. Kevin's going to want to stun this forward just a couple of inches. Now, does he play safe? Or um, go for the shot here? I think he's going to go for it and send the cue ball up table towards the three. Great shot. Wants it to stop. Yeah. It's got to go. It must pass the six. Because I thought he was g- he wanted it to stop to get it up in the other corner. and it, But it looked like he was waving for it to go. And may have 
to settle for a safety again. If he does, he'll probably use the uh, 7 as a blocker ball. Because I don't think he can get the cue ball up in behind the 6. He'll just bank the... hit the 3 into the uh, end rail somewhere about halfway between the 6 and the 9. Put the cue ball on the side rail and the 3 ball on the side rail. Can leave anything easy for Trent. No, he's let him I see bank. the ball. He didn't want to let him see it. But he's uh, a bank into half of a pocket with the four ball in front of it. to just uh, go for an all-out safety there. And I think he, Kevin can see it on a half a ball. Yeah, he's let him see it, and I think he's let him see enough to make it. If not, Kevin, yeah. I'll see he'll probably um, bank this three ball cross side, cross to the other side of the table, mm. and bring the cue ball back down table, even up over by where the six is or something. Well, That's good. Back down by the yeah. nine. That way kind of scares me a little bit. That side, that corner pocket's big. <laughs> Look at distance. That's good. Mm -hmm. This is the battle for the three ball. Guy who gets th makes the three probably wins the game. I think you can see Kevin shoot this one. He's going to cross bank it. Time for playing safe is uh, either that or he's going to go off of it and put the cue ball up uh, between the uh, eight and the four. Very nice shot. Yeah, we like those bank shots. It's, I was pretty sure he was going to go for it. He's going to have to run into the 8 here. You're going to see him draw off of it. Use the 8 as a stopper. He's going to draw off of it. The cue ball will hit with the draw. It'll hit the 8, and it'll pull it over to the other side of the table. He didn't, not quite as much as he wanted to. Would you would you cut this into the side? Uh, possibly. I think it's what he's looking at. It's out far enough from the rail that I think it's the shot to shoot. If the cue ball is going in the proper direction. It should miss the six. When you want to hit this pocket speed. Mm, good pace on the cue ball. Yeah, he wants it to bounce. Mm. Okay, that's, that's, that's good. Play the six and you want the angle. He wants to hit it easy, he wants the back angle. Ah, I guess that'll work too. I'd like to have had the other angle and let the seven ball go to the rail and follow forward with it. Let the seven ball kind of go to the side rail, just hit it easy. And uh, the cue ball goes forward with it, but it's a nice shot. Good shot. I was wondering what Kevin would do here. Mm -hmm. I'll have to remember that shot. No. No, just make creating the angle to get over there because you know the you don't these little tables stuff like this you don't have to be perfect. Uh huh. Very nice. Now the score is three one, leading by Kevin. No, Kevin's. Uh, this is the best he's played in the finals or a semifinals since we started doing the tournaments. It is a good feeling when you're performing well. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's a great feeling. I had a friend of mine, he used to call it the dance. So he's, you know, when, you play w when you're playing good, it's, he says it's like a dance to everything. You know, it is. And we talk about rhythm and stuff like that with playing cool. And, you know, with the, the pace at which you walk in and out of the table and things like mm. that, when you're playing really good, it's all at the same pace. Mm. And so my friend says it's like you're dancing with the pool table. I love watching pool. Like, and that's like, yeah, it's an interesting take on it. I love that analogy. Yeah. 
And you're right. A, a pace, a good pace, and a good rhythm is very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to find out, you know, what your natural rhythm is and what you know your pace is, not what somebody else tells you it is. We all move to our own beat, and you have to figure out what yours is and pull. Exactly. We have Chen here approaching the table, looking at a long, thin cut on the one. Yeah, and uh, the two balls on the end rail with the one here. And that's why Kevin rolled out here to. He's daring him to shoot at it. He's supposed to play safe. Kevin's going to play safe off of this. He's going to thin the uh, right side of the one ball and put the cue ball two rails back up behind the nine four. Or not. He's going to try and play the one ball up there. He was trying to hit the back of the five. I thought he'd have hit that side of it. Uh. This side the fit with the cue ball. The cue ball hits here, here, and comes back down here. One ball comes out here, but it doesn't really matter as long as you get the cue ball. And here, the one ball doesn't matter. I wish we had a telestrator. He's working. Uh, he's been writing a program for a telestrator. Okay. And we don't have it. Per we don't have it. We have to learn how to use it and stuff yeah. too. But uh, after this match, I'm going to show you something that I'll show you a video mm -hmm. of how people are showing different angles. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. They used that for the uh, 2016 uh, Snooker World Championship, and it's sort of like a 3D kind of camera where you can you can see what the actual angle is like oh. as if you're at a table it's very very interesting everything is computerized yeah that's pretty in that's pretty neat they have those uh i know they have those fisheye um cameras that do the 360 like the 360 degree um video tours and stuff like that and i always wondered what one of, you know how, what it'd be like to have one of those on top of a pool table very nice shot by Kevin. Uh, he, uh, it's a two-way shot almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was going for that and just missed it. And, but, you know, coming around, you got to come all the way down table for the two anyhow. Uh, leaving Trent a very, very thin cut on the one. And the the top left corner pocket, it's a, yeah, it's pretty big. a threat. It's, it's a pretty big hole up there. And oh, he's he okay. He's just thinned it. <laughs> it's a good hit. No, he hasn't left anything easy for Kevin. The one does not. Pretty sure the one does not pass the seven ball. If it goes, it's really close. Well, maybe it does go. But the cut, I don't like the you know the back cut where the cue ball's going. It's um, difficult every time. Well, yeah, and you're going to have to come three rails out back down for the two ball and have the cue ball kind of in the area where it is right now is the angle where it's going. You've got to straighten it up and, you know, make it miss the three and all this other crap and and stuff. <laughs> and it's, at the end of the day, I have to keep minding my P's and Q's. Great shot by Kevin. Yeah, it was a nice shot. One ball is not frozen to the rail. Uh, Trent is a, a good defensive player. I saw him uh, executed some very nice safety shots and also some uh, nice escapes also. Yeah. We'll see what he does here. Looks yeah. like a two or one rail. He pick. would like to hit it one rail because the cue ball will stick right there and pop the one ball out. Well, <laughs> you, yeah, when you hit Kevin would take that. Yeah, but he was wanting to hit it one rail. One rail. It's harder to hit it that way. The seven ball's a lot bigger, but m he can get uh, better things can happen for him if he hits it uh, one rail than if he hits it two. It looks like Kevin is going to draw this one back. Huh? I can't tell that it looks like he's drawing. Yeah, he is. He's trying to draw it all the way back down. And yeah, he's okay. Yeah, well, uh, no, it's, it's, very a it's a pretty thin cut. Yeah. Trying to play safe again. Oh, good try. Very good. <laughs> uh, just not going the way there. 
intending two ball in the corner let the cue ball go forward and then you shoot the three either in the side or in the corner depending on where you end up kind of take what the table gives you bear down and make the shot because it's going in a good direction for you Probably draw, shoot this up in the bottom, shoot this in the bottom uh, left hand corner with some draw and draw up above the four, or he can just slide off of it. It's okay, but he didn't want to bump the four. Now he will take the four and the five in the same same pocket. Well, that, you know, that, that corner's pretty tight now past that five ball. See, so he's cutting it in the side because that corner was really tight past that five. He wants that to, to, to hoe. Best thing you can hope for is having him shooting out of the jaws. Mm. It's always difficult when you <laughs> have to do that. Yeah. It makes queuing very, very difficult. <gasps> yeah, you just see how far back in you're shooting and. Of course, Kevin makes it look easy. Mm -hmm. uh, he wanted this to roll down a little bit further. He's going to have to come to the short side of the seven, or he's going to um, run into it. He wanted it to roll forward another inch, inch and a half. When anybody tells you it's a game of inches, they lie. It's a game of millimeters. Absolutely. It's a completely different shot from, you know, literally a sixteenth of an inch. He miscued again. We're uh, cutting that tip off when we get home tonight. Was it the Indian or the arrow? <laughs> <laughs> the Indian or the arrow? He's yeah. a little bit short. Good. He's a little bit short, but I think yeah, he'll like to cut this in. And he can reach this. It's a seven-foot table. Okay. Yeah, and just under. like that, he is. It's going to be three-two. No, he rolled past it a little ways. He's supposed to make this. We'll see what happens here. So players in in Taiwan in in a stall oh, is okay. Mm. Nowhere close. So it's three to two. So you watching any good pool on uh, on t the internet recently? Uh, well, most I I've been watching. Uh, believe uh, believe it or not, uh, rail uh, rail birds production videos on YouTube oh. and that's <laughs> what uh, we are currently watching. Uh, there's right some on. very nice local uh, players from Michigan. Uh, I've been watching some uh, snooker players. Yeah. The uh, world snooker champion was recently Mark Shelby took the first, first uh, that match is uh, coming up, uh, or is it already? Is it this weekend between Earl and Appleton? Um, yes, the uh, four pocket challenge, mm -hmm. ten ball. Yes, that is this weekend, uh, May sixth. So it's, it's today. It's today. Yes, yeah. today. Yes. Oh no, May sixth was yesterday. Today's the seventh. It started, I believe. Oh, it started yet yes. last night. I, yes. Yeah. Yes. Cool. I want to try and get and see some of that. So Kevin's got the, uh, it's not the easiest shot, even though it looks like it should be because of trying to get shape on the two. He's trying to draw down and around a couple of rails to get a little bit above where he was just now for the two ball. Uh, when you're jacking up like that, it uh, changes the angle. So you have to cut it more because it actually squirts the ball out to the side a little bit when you jack up like that. If you've put any anguish on it, it squirts it to the side. So he actually had to play to overcut that ball to hit the center of the hole. Mm. Well, that's not a good shot by Trent. Anytime when your opponent make, uh, makes a mistake, you should really punish your opponent. Yeah, you, you don't want your opponent approaching the table thinking that it's okay for them to make mistakes and not get punished for it. Yeah. Well, and this is, you know, this is the finals of a tournament. So I don't care what tournament you're playing in. The finals, the guys can play. So, absolutely. yeah, you're absolutely supposed to punish them. 
whether if it's with the gnarliest safety they've ever seen or just flat out running out on them. Nothing scares a guy more than you have no fear and you just flat out run out on them. It's a nice three railer. Very nice. Two inches more would have, been, would have been better. Yeah, the seven ball is a really big ball here. I just brush off the side of it, and uh, it'll come. The cue ball will come back up towards the four ball. Looks Don't like he's going forward. Hard. He is going forward, but if he brushes oh. the C, if he would have just brushed the seven ball there, it would have still would have been okay. He would have pushed the cue ball out towards the four. And now he's fine anyway. He'll just roll this ball in. And you just touch it to the hole. Sneak around it. It's a Very nice, nice shot. touch of shot, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't, didn't overrun it or underrun it there, which is really easy to do. To a nice angle so he can go to the rail and back out for the six. He'd like to be... Um, either out towards the center of the table or closer to the rail so that he can slide around the seven ball to shoot the seven in the same hole as the six. Great shot by Kevin. Yeah, or he, he can just shoot and stop now that he's dead straight in. Yeah, don't try anything fancy. No. He's got a little bit of angle to work with here. He can go forward with it, or he can draw it back. I think you're going to see him go forward. I'm going to punch it forward off the end rail. Very nice cueing. Mm -hmm. um, right. So that, okay. that's, there, there's a, I always say that, you know, everybody's like, oh, you get the rolls. I think there's a roll in every shot. If he doesn't bump that, he's perfect, right? So that's the roll in every shot. Do you, do you get that extra inch or quarter of an inch and you can see the ball or are you hooked or, you know, now he has to, it, it's still, you know, a workable table for him, but now he has to work harder at it. Mm. So that's I say, I always think, you know, there's a little bit of roll in every shot. You have to get to that perfect spot or not and, you know, bump that ball to knock it out and further run out or not. Mm -hmm. Trying to tie it up. Kevin's going to go uh, shorten the bootstraps a little bit and Absolutely. buckle down. So it's still anybody's game. It's mm -hmm. uh, three apiece, and I think it's very important for Kevin to uh, this is stay calm. No, this is a big game here to go up on the uh, this this game here in the after after the halfway point of the match or the half being a in the lead at the halfway point of the match is a big game too. And for Trent, this last game he won. You know that Kevin not getting there is a big game, being. 3-3 three, three instead of 4-2 and a race to 7 is big good break nice control on the white and a shot at a 2 not easy I don't know if you can see enough of it to make it the, where the 3 ball is I don't think you're going to see Kevin play this 2 ball it's probably going to bank it cross side and uh, put the cue ball up in the top behind the 9 4. Good speed. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty routine uh, one rail kick at the two. But the fact that, you know, it's, uh, he's kicking and not shooting straight at a ball. That's always nice. So from here, the two, it actually looks like has a path to the hole. 
and the cue ball is going to go to the side right. He may, he may shoot this too. If it goes in that bottom left-hand hole, he's going to shoot it because the cue ball is going to be heading that way for a breakout or a possible safe on the three afterwards. Well, he was trying to brush it up in there behind it. I thought, yeah, so if it goes, I think he's going to shoot it, but maybe it didn't or... Sometimes I like to shoot stuff. He goes, no way, you're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's that two rail, two rail to the end of the, you know, uh -huh. safe. Yeah, Trent's a good, he's a good defensive player. Mm -hmm. no, nobody wants to give up anything. You know, they're both fighting for uh, See the difference between first and second in the tournament is uh, what it was it? It's 320 for first place, 165 for second place, and then there's also the Calcutta money, um, which is there's a difference of 120 dollars or something in the Calcutta. So, so what is the Calcutta money? Uh, the Calcutta is a um, it's, it's a player's auction. Okay. And everybody goes up for bid, minimum bid, and you, that money all goes into a different pot. And the guy who win, you know, who bids, who has the winning player, gets, you know, the first. Like these, there are only two places in the Calcutta. One of these guys is going to get first. One of them is going to get second. Okay. So all that money from all of the players goes into that pot. Now, is this something that people? They're not. If they're not from Northern Michigan, can they still participate in bidding? If they're from downstate Michigan area, uh, they would have to be here. Okay. So you heard it, everybody from downstate Michigan. You guys, there's more ch um, more reasons for you guys to travel up here and uh, participate in this wonderful yeah tournament. Well, absolutely. You know, Roger and Trista, they're adding money to every event. I've been looking at the uh, turn. There's all kinds of new tournaments coming up. There's uh, Old Times over in Mount uh, Mount Morris is putting on a lot of tournaments now. There's the other t one on Q. There's the, that new pool room. Who's Who's Billiards is having tournaments all the time. And some of those tournaments, not only is there not money added to them, but they're taking money out of them. Roger is putting money into every tournament. We had 11 players when we advertised guaranteed money on 32. He added $170 to the tournament. So, taking requests or are you doing cool stuff? <laughs> Very nice cut by Kevin. Yeah, no, he's and in trouble. Yeah, he lucked the ball in and then and, and just made another one, and now he's hooked again. Feeling the pressure here. Yeah. And, you know, every time Kevin does something, Trent s stands up straighter. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. You give them that confidence that they, you know, they're still right, in this. And, you right, know, Yeah. But that's what, you know, what is that's supposed to happen if you're, you know. Exactly. At this stage, Kevin's playing safe. It's a nice shot. Very nice. And and pool the momentum switch, it will it will shift. Sometimes it's not in your favor. Sometimes it is, and you have to. When it's not you're in your favor, you have to be very patient and do your best and wait. Your time will come. Yeah. Very lucky shot. Yeah. It happens. Yeah, it's part of this game. I ended up with a nice shot on the six. Just uh, roll it up for the seven in the side pocket. Hit that with good speed. Follow the seven. You can go to the rail or not. Depends on what angle he has. And I'm gonna draw this a little bit. Uh -huh. This is a center ball shot, straight up table. Or Didn't get an action he wanted, but he's okay. Mm -hmm.
leading, 4-3. And then takes the lead for the first time this match. Sorry. We haven't figured out yet, but uh, sometime within probably the next couple of weekends, we will be having the handicapped eight ball here. How long are you in town for? I will be in town for the next couple months. I'll oh. be leaving town in August, so I will. I might come watch. I, I won't. Come I'm out on Friday night and play the $10 weekly tournament that we're doing on Friday nights. Uh, is it at Fallen Timber also? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And we're going to be doing an in-house league, but you'll be back in school for that. So, but yeah, everything here at the Fallen Timbers. I like this place. This is my first time here, and uh, for those who have not been to Fallen Timbers, I, I recommend you to come check it out. It's a nice little place. We've got uh, several diamond seven-foot tables. Very nice environment. Friendly staff mm -hmm. and good food also. Yeah, they have bands in here from time to time. Um, they have leagues in here three days a week. St um, starting in the fall, it'll be four days a week. We have a sixth table coming, diamond table. They started out with, uh, if you can see over in the corner over there, there's stuff stacked on. There's a yes, table over yes. there. And it's it's not, it, it's a like six and a half foot um, valley table with Simona's cloth on it. Okay. And it plays good. But... Um, it's you know it's uh, it's not actually a seven foot table it's like six and a half foot, <laughs> but it plays good, and you know, usually sometimes we have that out here too. But they started with that, and now we have our five diamonds pretty soon to be six. Good hit by Kevin. He wants that to get out in there. Oh, I don't think he got there. Nope. Uh, Kevin's going to try and do kind of the same thing, then off of the two and come two rails back behind this three, nine, five. I can't tell if he can shoot this gap or not. It looks like he's massaying it a little bit. And that could just be to... Uh, he's left the two on. Yeah, but uh, it, it's hard to hold... For the three. For the three here. You can, but it is not easy. Very soft low shot. Well, I don't think he got there. Well, yeah. He's okay. All right, he's still got a shot. No, he's going to have to use some right-hand side to come back to shoot the four in the same pocket, I would, I would imagine. Uh, uh, he's probably going to draw a couple rails around for okay. it and try to come um, in between the five nine. Or with the five seven there, just like that. There we go. Yeah, anytime you can, when you can use natural angle, this mm -hmm. preferred option, doing less with the cue ball. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, it, this the center, the closer to the center that you can cue. Well, that's just lucky. No. Huh. So you know what happens when you start missing and doing things and stuff. It's like the pool gods say, oh, you don't want it. Well, we're going to give this one to this guy. <laughs> we tried to give it to you, and you said no. But, um, yeah, the natural angle is huge. It's anytime, every, it, the closer you can keep your cueing to the center of the cue ball, the more your cue ball is staying on the path that you aim for, or the yeah. path that you think that you're shooting on. Kevin and I have just started uh, recently reading um, Play Great Pool, the Mark Wilson's book. Uh huh. Really liking it. Good break by Kevin. Mm -hmm. A clear shot at the one. At the one, but does he play the one or does he play the one nine? That is the question.
He does really, really, really like to ride the nine ball, but it has to be the correct shot. Mm -hmm. Can he play him safe if he shoots this? Where's, you know, where are things going? What you don't want is a 10 at the 9 and you hook a 9 near the yeah. pocket for your opponent. Yeah. So he wants to be sure he knows exactly where everything's going. And he's not, he's just going to play the 1. So if it's not the right shot, he's not going to shoot it. <coughs> He's shot the gap between that 5-3 quite nicely. Just going to draw back a little bit and shoot the 3 right under his arm there. As long as he doesn't end up on top of the ball. Yeah, he's, he's okay. Uh, he's got a gap between it. He should be all right. Kevin just need a, needs to take his time and finish this layout here. Yeah, he's going to slide down below the 5 and shoot the 5 in the side pocket right there by his hand. Uh, he can either go forward with this with some spin, which is probably what he'll do, or he can draw it back. But I think going forward, because the drawing is pulling him further away from the six. Yeah. But going forward, because of the English he can put on uh, it, he can spin back into yes. it. One yeah. rail, wh yeah. one rail with some right hand sides. Yeah. Yeah, to make it spin back, you know, and like up table towards the six ball. There should be an alpha Kevin here. He just needs to cue nice. Did that That's one nice. Good. Yeah, it's okay. A little bit, a little bit l l larger <laughs> angle, but he's okay. Yeah, with the where the eight ball is, um, yeah. with you know, with a, in, within a diamond and a diamond of a pocket, it's supposed to be, you know, you're supposed to be able to pocket from almost anywhere on the table. So all he's got to do is yeah, come back on up. That. That's just just make sure you make the seven and that you know that the cue ball isn't going towards a hole. And that looks like he's going forward again with a little bit of English to come off the end rail. That will do. Okay, and this is just a little bit below center. You want to keep it from trying to travel forward at all and working over towards that other corner pocket. <coughs> Now we have 4-5, uh, uh, leading by Trent at one yep. point. Yeah, Trent's break. I'd like to get, uh, this is the first time for Trent, uh, Trent being here, I think. Um, Tony Flannery came up uh, from downstate also, and there was a, a couple other people who was their first time being here. So it's it's nice to see new faces, but you want to get like their you know Fargo ratings for people that are coming to tournaments, so that it's nice to see because it's the new rating all over for a yes. lot of stuff all over yes. the country, and it's nice to see what they say people are and how they should match up and how it actually transpires. Uh, you know? I I I heard that the Fargo rating is actually uh, you can is measurable across a, a nation's. Uh, it's uh, the, uh, around the world, yeah. Right. And it's it's based on, they have to have a lot of information on you. I've played in a lot of CSI events. All of the tournaments we played out in Washington for the Western BCA and stuff, those were all CSI events. So they have like fourteen or 1,500 games on me. And so it's uh, it, it depends, too, on how much information they have on you. Mm on how accurate your rating is, but they're working on it, and it does take into account who you've played and how you've done against them and how they've done against other people. So it compares everybody against everybody, which has got to be an insane algorithm, you know. I would imagine, <laughs> yes. But anyways. Well, it's a tough shot on the one, and Trent is giving it back to Kevin. No. I don't blame him. No, and Kevin, ha you know, you always have something in mind when you push out. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Uh, he uh, may go for the bank here. And um, kind of take what the table gives him on the uh, two ball. Mm, I think he was playing a safe and... It, uh, not exactly what he intended, but it's still all right. Nothing mm. easy for trying. No, nope. so the only thing that's uh, there really is the uh, 
bank back at the side pocket right there behind him, but it does, uh, because he's doing that, the cue ball does have to travel a little bit, but it has to travel a little to get to the two anyhow. And then he went for the other one bank with the, sa the backup safety, if, yeah. hit it short. If he makes it, uh, he hit it short, so if he makes it, that means he would have had it hit a little thinner, so the cue ball would have traveled a little bit further, and he probably would have had a shot. Kevin's looking, it looks like, to just thin this ball and bring the cue ball back down table. Lots of yeah. balls to hide behind, yeah, and he uh, did get there. Yeah, breaking up. Uh, That's good. A little more space between that nine, too. Make sure that, you know, you get a clean hit. I think Trent is... Grabbing his jump cue for this one. Mm -hmm. uh, earlier, Chen attempted a jump cue, and uh, the cue ball and the off dribble both flew off the table. Yeah, if, but without you know, on the smaller tables are harder to jump on. You don't have as much landing surface, a place for the ball to to bounce and stuff before going off the table. He just barely um, mishit that from it going in. Kevin's standing in my way, so I can't really see what he's got here. He's going to bank off of this, try to put the cue ball up behind the three. He's going up in behind the deuce nine again. And it did not work. I'd have probably gone up, try to get up behind the three ball there. And it, he's mishitting some things, so I don't know if maybe that's what he was trying and he just mishit it and it ended up going the other way, or if he was trying to get him up in there behind the, the nine deuce again. That's not good. Uh, if it hits the five. He is lucky. Uh, Okay, it might be pretty know. straight. If it's a pretty straight up uh, combination, yeah. Kevin will shoot it. Uh, Kevin needs to apply some pressure here on Trent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trent is coming back to the table. Mm -hmm. Too many times. Mm -hmm. He They're needs to. Yeah. They're both giving each other a lot of opportunities that they haven't been giving other people in their matches. And they're, it's higher pressure getting in that finals, that money difference. There's the fatigue of, Absolutely. you know, um, some not being here at 10, 11 o'clock this morning and playing pool all day long and sitting and waiting. And it's the lifestyle of a pool player. <laughs> Good shot by Kevin. Oh, get off of it. And um, well, I if might as well. If he's frozen to the two. He might as well. It's you know really not that big of a deal if he's frozen to it. I know I won't be watching the hit. But if he's frozen to it, he can push through it anyhow, it don't matter. And he does really understand the angles and how things work. And well, he's going off the side of it. He's definitely. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, the sneak out. If he left him even the smidge of the, uh, he's got to hit, I don't know, he's got to hit about a half ball to make this combination. And I know he hasn't left him that. Sorry if I sound biased. He is my husband, guys. <laughs> <laughs> left a shot it looks like Kevin's walking over to see how close it is but well, I guess it's a good thing that didn't go <coughs> uh, Trent's got a nice opportunity here with the way these balls are laying now Biggest thing is going to be um, from the six to the seven. The uh, mm -hmm. 
the proximity of the eight. It does go into several holes, so I mean, it should be okay. Then I was going to have to work up and down table for the from the three to the four, and that seven eight gets to be big for for that now too. And so does the nine ball. And miss the nine. That's a good shot. Probably just going to drop this ball in the side pocket, go forward. Seven ball probably going in the side pocket as well. Oh, he will come around. Okay. Would he come around? I think he's just going to go oh, forward or, or with it and play the seven in the side pocket. Or he could be trying to draw it back, and that would be silly. Got some excitement from the background. Yeah, hey, you know, I'm glad people are having fun. Right on. So if you <laughs> haven't been down here at Fallen Timber, I encourage you to come join the fun here. Yeah. Lots of excitement, lots of laughter, yeah. lots of action. Uh, hit that nice come around for straight in on the nine. Trent is Put definitely feeling, on the hill. He's feeling comfortable. Mm -hmm. Kevin stiffened up or something, you know. It's uh, it's hard to sit and wait for people to finish playing to Absolutely. get to you. You're, you start to get cold. You're not in the heat of battle anymore, and they are. And it really is. It's it's hard to win. People think it's easy. Oh, they got to beat you twice, this and that, or you know, you're playing that much better than everybody because you you know haven't been beat yet. But it is. It's hard to sit, and then okay, let's go play now. Mm-hmm. Good break. Nice break. And get up the cue ball. Once that five to stop. He can draw it. He play this one. And to avoid the corner, he has to draw it a little bit anyhow. Cue ball may be going at the uh, nine ball here. I don't even know if he's looked at it yet. But the nine ball is on the rail, you know, completely out of the hole. I think he was uh, coming in for that combination. He did look at it. That is a two that Kevin shoots. Mm -hmm. He's going to get rail. it to the rail. Yes, he did. Yes, he got the rail. Yes, he did. Yeah. Just thin it and come back over. Good hand. That's a nice shot. And when you get him up against a rail like that, anytime you can, it takes angles away from him and cueing possibilities to be able to kick at a ball. So it, it, anytime you can get him up against the back of a ball, um, hide other, you know, rails from them, get him up against a rail, it uh, it ups your possibilities of something good happening for you. Absolutely. Makes it harder on them. Trent's going to try and cut this ball in, though. He's going to play safe. They keep fooling me. Mm. He's uh, he's buckled down. He wants this. Yeah. He's decided right now this is his match to win. And, uh, he's he's, a, he's a counter uh, applying some pressure towards Kevin. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. Yeah, and ladies and gentlemen, this is where the, uh, the, the mental aspect of pool sets in. Yeah, yeah, you have to. It's never over until that last ball falls. Exactly. You know, you have to give your, keep your mind in the game, and the, which, you know, gives you the ability to stay, you know, at least stay and fight, throwing, you know, everything that you got at it. A lot of people, when things start going against them and things, they just, oh, I can't do anything right, and no, you know, 
And if you do that, there's no way in the world you're ever going to win. Oh, baby, that one. Then. He almost short. overcut it. Oh, yeah. That's why he ended up coming past. He was think he was going to come for the three on the side and next. Oh, okay. I thought and he was going for the corner and no. the bottom left. I think he was going for the side next, but he almost overcut the ball because he hit it all to the farthest out, you know, edge of the hole that he could. And so it, it, that makes a difference. If you're hitting a half an inch over, then, you know, where you, you know, you hit to the outside of the hole, that's about a half an inch difference. Uh -huh. And that makes a, you know, difference on the, how the far the cue ball is going to travel. So he would have hit it fatter, so it wouldn't have traveled as far. It's Kevin's chance to come back. He's struggling really bad right now. His speed is off. Uh, his his stroke is off. He he never miscues like this. Maybe once or two in a week, mm. a month. <laughs> I I had honor to play uh, in the same league with Kevin last season, and Kevin's a fantastic player. <laughs> one of the best players I've seen in person. And, uh, I've enjoyed getting my butt kicked by him for the last 20 plus years, <laughs> most of the time. Sometimes it gets boring and old, but that's all right. I always support him, and even if he's playing me, want him to win when he's at the table, and want me to win when I'm at the table. <laughs> Yeah, he doesn't, like where the, uh, doesn't like where the cue ball is going. And that's why he chose to shoot it up in the corner rather than in the side. Good speed. Yeah, nice speed. He's just going to slide off this a little bit between the 8 and the 9. Kind of like the same stroke he just hit this last ball with. Good. Yeah, hit a little bit harder, but it was the same stroke. That's good. Should be Kevin's game here. I shouldn't say that. Usually there's the commentator's jinx. Yeah, we know nothing about it. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Kevin, take this game here. Yeah, and he does have to cut it. This nine ball sitting on the rail. So, you know, before it was not just in front of the hole, it was on the rail. Very nice. 6-5. And he's got a... Well, Trent has, uh, for this match, has Kevin's fate in his hands because, you know, it, he's breaking and he's on the hill. Uh, we were really happy to get the opportunity to start streaming again. We were afraid we weren't going to when we first moved here. Um, a lot of people were like, oh, people don't do that. They don't like that. We don't do that here. And so, you know, we kind of had put the company on the back burner and it sat there for a while. And then finally this place opens up to the public and they were like, shoot, yeah, we'd love to do that. And so here we are. And now they're going to have, you know, want us running uh, an in-house league in here. And That's great. Now, uh, Kevin, are you, uh, you and Kevin, both of you guys are, you guys are from Seattle. Were you guys streaming, doing uh, production? We were streaming in Seattle. Yeah. Okay. We, uh, we folded up the company when we moved here to take care of his mom. I said we were looking at doing things when we first moved here, and a lot of people. He's gonna make the nine. Oh no, but I'm pretty sure Trent's he gonna make this. Yeah, it, he's yeah. gonna draw right off of there into this nine ball, and the match is over. And then we'll do it all over again. So it's he, he's got to beat Kevin twice? Yes. Okay. Let's see how he does. It looks like he's cutting it. He's oh, banking okay. at it. I thought for sure he would have just drawn into it. Maybe didn't like the possibility of following ah, it in. Ah, the, the white goes in. With yeah, it, it's a possibility. All right, well, that's, this, that's the end of uh, set number one.